Good morning and welcome to this service of morning prayer for Thursday morning, the 1st of September. Happy spring. My name is Catherine Boyer. I'm the Dean of Newcastle and this service of morning prayer is part of the online prayer ministry of Christ Church Cathedral, Newcastle. I'm the Dean of Newcastle and I acknowledge that the Deanery where I'm recording this service, Christ Church Cathedral and St Peter's Hamilton all stand on Awabakal land. This land has always been a Wabikul land, it always will be a Wabikul land. And the Wabikul people are the custodians of this land. I pay my respects to Elders past and present and pray that I with the Cathedral and St Peter's communities may join with them in a spirit of reconciliation in caring for all that God has entrusted to us in the good gifts of creation. This week the Diocesan clergy of the Diocese of Newcastle are at Diocesan Leaders Conference and so there'll only be morning prayer offered online um, until Saturday evening. Please pray for us as we are praying for you. Thursday morning prayer can be found in the prayer book on page 407 or on the ePray app, which you can download from the um, app store on your device. Our Psalms this morning, being the start of the month, are Psalms 1 and 2, and our reading from the first letter of John, chapter 2. In the name of God, who is creator, redeemer, and sanctifier. Amen. This is the message we have heard from Christ, that God is light in whom there is no darkness at all. Glory to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Our opening canticle, a song of God's herald. Go up to a high mountain, herald of good tidings to Zion. Lift up your voice with strength, herald of good tidings to Jerusalem. Lift up your voice, fear not. Say to the cities of Judah, behold your God. See the Lord God coming with power, coming to rule with his mighty arm. He brings his reward for the people of God, the recompense for those who are saved. God will feed his flock like a shepherd and gather the lambs in his arms. He will hold them to his breast and gently lead those that are with young. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Psalms 1 and 2, on page 224 of the prayer book. Psalms 1 and 2. Blessed are they who have not walked in the counsel of the ungodly, nor followed the way of sinners, nor taken their seat amongst the scornful. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on that law will they ponder day and night. They are like trees planted beside streams of water that yield their fruit in due season. Their leaves also shall not wither, and look, whatever they do, it shall prosper. As for the ungodly, it is not so with them. They are like the chaff which the wind scatters. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand up at the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord cares for the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Psalm 2 Why are the nations in tumult? And why do the peoples cherish a vain dream? The kings of the earth rise up, and the rulers conspire together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bonds asunder, let us throw off their chains from us. He that dwells in heaven shall laugh them to scorn. The Lord will hold them in derision. Then will he speak to them in his wrath, and terrify them in his fury. I, the Lord, have set up my king on Zion, my holy hill. I will announce the Lord's decree, that which he has spoken. You are my son, this day have I begotten you. Ask of me, 
and I will give you the nations for your inheritance, the uttermost parts of the earth for your possession. You may break them with a rod of iron and shatter them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Now therefore be wise, O kings, be advised you that are judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with awe, and govern yourselves in fear and trembling, lest he be angry and you perish in your course. For his wrath is quickly kindled. Blessed are those that turn to him for refuge. Almighty God, who wonderfully created us in your own in your own image, and yet more wonderfully restored us in your Son Jesus Christ, grant that as He came to share our human nature, so we may be partakers in His divine glory, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of John. Chapter 2, beginning at the 18th verse. Children, it is the last hour. As you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, so now many Antichrists have come. From this we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, they went out from us, but they did not belong to us. For if they had belonged to us, they would have remained with us. But by going out, they made it plain that none of them belongs to us. But you have been anointed by the Holy One, and all of you have knowledge. I write to you, not because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and you know that no lie comes from the truth. Who is the liar but the one who denies that Jesus is the Christ? This is the Antichrist, the one who denies the Father and the Son. No one who denies the Son has the Father, Everyone who confesses the Son has the Father also. Let what you heard from the beginning abide in you. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, then you will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is what he has promised us, eternal life. I write these things to you concerning those who would deceive you. As for you, the anointing that you received from him abides in you. And so you do not need anyone to teach you. But as his anointing teaches you about all things, and is true and is not a lie, and just it is as it has taught you, abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him, so that when he is revealed, we may have confidence and not be put to shame before him at his coming. May your word live in us and bear much fruit to your glory. Our canticle, the hymn of the word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world knew him not. He came to his own home, and his own people received him not. But to all who received him, who believed on his name, he has given power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of a man, but of God. And the word became flesh, and dwelt among us full of grace and truth. We have beheld his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, and from his fullness have we all received, and grace upon grace. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things. Graft in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion. Nourish us with all goodness. And of your great mercy, keep us in the same. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In this time of prayer and reflection, I invite you to be still as I read this reflection by David Adam from his book, Tides and Seasons. In this frail craft, Pause in the presence of God. Know that you are never alone, that he is always with you. Stop your busyness and your struggles to know that he is there. Hear him say, be still and know that I am God. Perhaps you have never really called on him before. Stop all that you are doing, even listening to this, and do so now. Know that we cannot survive this life alone, and call upon him. Take time to realise that amidst the storms of life, he is with you. He never leaves you. Relax knowing he is there. No need for effort to bring him. Just call upon him and awaken him. You are with him in this place where you are. And he is with you. Call upon him, say, you, Lord, are in my life. Your presence fills it. Your presence is peace. You, Lord, are in the storm. Your presence fills it. Your presence is peace. Know that in this frail craft which we call life, he is present. Picture the disciples in their boat. The day started off well. There were crowds of people clamouring to see Jesus, bringing their troubles for his healing, their anxieties for his calming. The sky was blue and the water like a mill pond. Everything in the world seemed lovely. A good day to be alive. They move away from the crowds and onto the sea. They are tired after a busy day and everyone wants a rest. The gentle rocking of the boat and the lapping of the waters soon have them all resting. Jesus is now asleep in the boat. What happens next takes them all by surprise even the seasoned fishermen. A storm hits the boat. Great winds have come from nowhere. The waves rise and dark clouds lower. At first it is just spray that prevents them from seeing clearly. Then great waves beat against and enter their boat. They are being driven further and further from the shore and from the area they know so well. They are alone and so small, the sea so large. They are so frail, the waves so mighty and strong. Soon they will be overwhelmed, soon they will perish. Meanwhile, Jesus sleeps in the boat. Yes, Jesus is there. He has not saved them from the storm. 
He is there with them in the storm, and this will not be the last time. He is there to be called upon, there to be awakened. Yet the disciples try everything they can to no avail. Soon, it seems, human frailty will be swamped. So they cry out, Lord, save us, we are perishing. It will not be the last time they feel like this. The storm is raging about them. They and their vessel are so fragile. Jesus then awakens. He stands amidst the wind and waves. He is there in the storms of life and he says, Peace, be still. He stills the noise of the waves, the raging of the wind, and the mounting fears of the disciples. They may be now entering a strange country, but they have a newfound peace. For a little while, all around them is calm. They are still learning that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that we should not perish but have everlasting life. Ponder these words of Julian of Norwich. He did not say, you shall not be tempest tossed, you shall not be weary, you shall not be discomforted. But he said, you shall not be overcome. Once we believe in Jesus, we do not escape the storms and troubles of life. In fact, in some strange sense, more storms than ever seem to come our way. Perhaps we should expect this. If there is any power of evil in the world, we should expect it to oppose anything or anyone that is trying to do what is right and good. However, all of us will meet with storms. There will be times when the tide ebbs on us and we know our human frailty. For all of us will come the experiencing, experience that we are perishing, no matter how far we try and run from it or hide. But for all this, God loves and God cares. And there is more. He has sent his son that we should not perish. In this frail craft that we call life, he is present, just waiting to be awakened. Let us learn to call upon him. Our, our, our lives are often like a little boat on a great and stormy sea. It is expressed well by the Hebridean saying, it is expressed well by the Hebridean saying, so frail our boat, so great yon sea. Know that we are never left alone and he does not want us to be overcome. Here is a prayer thought from the Hebrides. Round our skiff be God's aboutness, ere she try the deeps of sea. Sea shall frail for all her stoutness, unless thou her helmsman be. The following prayer could have been known by the early Celts and loved by the people that live so close to the sea in all its moods. It is by St. Augustine. Blessed are all your saints, O God and King, who have travelled over the tempestuous sea of this life and have made the harbour of peace and felicity. Watch over us who are still on this dangerous voyage. Frail is our vessel and the, and the ocean wide. 
but as in your mercy you have set our course, so pilot the vessel of our life towards the everlasting shore of peace and bring us at last to the quiet haven of our heart's desire through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. From the Book of Common Prayer Keep, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy church with thy perpetual mercy. And because the frailty of man without thee cannot but fall, keep us ever by thy help from all things hurtful, and lead us to all things profitable to our salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. promise to call upon the presence regularly, especially when powers ebb or storms increase. Learn to say regularly, Lord, save us, we are perishing. Lord and Heavenly Father, you have brought us safely to this new day. Keep us by your mighty power, protect us from sin, guard us from every kind of danger, and in all we do this day, direct us in the fulfilling of your purpose, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of peace equip us with everything good, so that we may do his will, and may he work in us that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory for ever. Amen. <laughs>